Yo guys, what is going on? Nickname is just Yellow, and today this Norwegian hardcore PC gamer is gonna tell you people a little bit about 64 tick and 128 tick, and what tick rate is, uh, the nature of the beast. I'm gonna talk a lot about how uh, the nature of the beast is, essentially, and you'll be able to learn a lot about this kind of stuff here. And also with the recent updates for CSGO, um, there is a lot of extra stuff that need to be explained so that people won't really be uh, fooled or bullied or uh, whatever the fuck that might be involved involved in your not being, you, know, you, you as a guy not being knowledgeable of this kind of stuff. So anyways, I'm gonna debunk some stuff here, it's gonna be juicy, so you better stick through this here. Hopefully I'll be able to upload this during the weekend, that way you get to watch Deathmatch and, uh, you know, waste a lot of time on learning stuff. <laughs> so let's start. What the hell is a tick rate anyways? Uh, 64 tick uh, versus 128 tick. Um, I don't really need to dwell into it as a versus topic right now, but uh, what a uh, tick rate essentially is, is how fast a game will up or update itself and send information to a server. Uh, what is a server? That's what you're essentially playing on. If you're playing matchmaking in CSGO, that's where all the number crunching hap uh, happens of the world that you're in. You're just playing on the client, which is a mirror of what happens on the server, which will have more lag the further away you are away from the server. Which essentially is why if I play with somebody from America in Norway here, for example, uh, for example, for example, that would cause a lot of fucking more lag, which is very unsatisfactory to play with, by the way, because then stuff doesn't instantaneously up, uh, update, which is probably why you people watching this gameplay in 60 frames per second, uh, any kill that I get that eventually, like, uh, I uploaded it, it right here because eventually I'm able to do a lot of uh, beast work, like, the kills, they will look more satisfying because they were more satisfying to get because I'm playing at 128 tick, I was playing at uh, 100, I don't know, you can see the frame rate, but, like, everything was a lot more instant, so... Yeah, uh, yeah, let's explain it a little bit further though. Um, so the total data that you send from your server to the client and that the client sends back after it has processed everything, uh, it will be set at a certain rate, which takes a certain amount of total uh, just bandwidth, okay? Uh, doubling it down though, it would increase the uh, cost of Valve servers twice as much for matchmaking. And that is actually not as profitable considering that you essentially get to play the game for free after you pay the fee of just buying and getting the game. Which essentially is the stuff that will be a gateway to people opening a fuckton of cases, which is kind of stupid. But anyways, the thing there to understand is that it's not going to be too profitable unless somebody will pay extra for 128 tick servers. Uh, which is uh, actually something I would do, and that is why we got Sivo, we got Face It, and then you got my favorite, which is ESEA. Um, so, you know, that's a thing, but the main point to take from that is that it costs more and, you know, it, it will involve a lot more stuff, which is what we're gonna delve into. So, what more stuff happens if you're playing at 128 tick compared to 64? I mean, after all, you're only updating the game twice as fast per second now, are you not? Well, believe it or not, but there is a couple of smaller advantages that makes a game feel more satisfying, but the fun thing is that it only feels more satisfying. It's not actually more satisfying unless there is some severe tactical uh, thing that you're, you're lacking with, uh, or I mean yeah, that you're not lacking with. If your system, for example, is lacking, 128 tick if with a good internet connection could be better for you. But anyways, I won't dwell too far into that. So let's uh, let's look at the bullshit, uh, it's only satisfying kind of aspect of, of 64 tick, because there's a lot of stuff here that does not make sense and that are fooling people. So one of the first things I want to dwell into is uh, the audio feedback that you get for playing CSGO. If I hit a guy and he is close by enough, there will be an instant, absolutely goddamn fucking instant audio cue of me hitting the guy. If I hit him with a grenade, a bullet, etc. Um, now, despite the range, if I hit the guy in the head, there will also be an audio cue that is a lot more short, it's a lot more sharper, it's cleaner, and it signifies that I hit the guy in the head, which is also very satisfying to get, okay? Now, if you're playing at 128 tick, you're getting that information a lot faster to you, on top of other things I'll explain uh, in a second. Uh, fun thing though is that actually processing the sound when you get that information back from the server, your game for your game to do that, it happens instantaneously. It's a lot faster than rendering a frame, mainly because the total uh, sounds like you you essentially on your game version you have all the sounds already. So as soon as the the machine just get the cue, all right, we gotta play off this sound, and your system is you know mediocre. Uh, the sound will be instantaneously sent to your headset. Now here comes the second epic part. Your brain actually processes audio uh, cues or just audio feedback a lot faster than 
like visual feedback. Uh, I've read a fuck ton of uh, illustrated science about this kind of crap, so I just, just remember it because it's so weird. But if there's anything we can learn from that, it is that you get by the audio cues a lot further connected to the game because of 128 tick compared to 64 which in in the scale of how fast and how many details you can hear with your ear it's a lot tighter it's twice as tight but it feels even even tighter because you know everything is being detected instantly so that is actually one of the key things that will allow people to um, you know feel as if 128 tick is better than what it really is also it, this is actually applies to bullets as well when you shoot bullets uh, when they appear on the wall Especially when they appear on the wall, for example, or when you hit an enemy, uh, this this will be a lot more satisfying if you're playing 128 tick, and that is because the average bullets that come out of your gun on 64 tick they won't be as even as they should be uh, upon what what you hear and what you see and what actually happens on the server at 64 tick. Uh, updating uh, that to 128 tick would be a lot smoother and technically speaking if we could doubling down on 128 tick to 264 that would be even more satisfying so take that for what you will but it's still a feature and it's still something that connects us further to the game and I'll use this as an example if you sit down on a PC and you force force a game to play at 30 FPS it feels sluggish as fuck and it's very unsatisfying tune it up to 60 now suddenly you are at your territory, at least that was my old way of playing games, okay? But then I got myself 144 Hz monitor, and I enabled 144 Hz, which allows me to, you know, literally play games at over, like, uh, see them at 144 FPS. Now suddenly everything was like twice as smooth, it's the same concept, the further we get connected to the game the more satisfying it's gonna be, which is really nice. So. It's actually a feature, it's a lot more placebo than what you would think. If you're still playing really tight at your game, yeah, you might not be able to lose those one-shot, one, one -shot, headshot duels that you might have with, with enemies here and there. Or that, maybe that clutch run around the corner, one-shot, headshot with a P250 that you should have ha should have gotten, for example. And maybe the enemy will sidestep you a lot faster and it will look more bu bullshitty and buggy because the, the, the connection is not updating as fast. All of these things play into account, but with 64 tick, at least everything gets more smooth. But if you still play the mental game, the money game, the game itself, and the information game as effectively as you can, and you are really skilled at the game, you will be able to do just as fine, if not only a little bit worse, technically speaking, than what you would on uh, 64, uh, yeah, well, I mean on 128 tick. So. Yeah, let's uh, talk a little bit about the features that are involved in uh, in uh, the service though, because I, I think I forgot to explain it. So uh, there are rage hackers in CSGO, they are almost not to be seen anymore. Uh, the reason for this is because of how the recoil and accuracy system in CSGO works. So believe it or not, but when you shoot a bullet, that bullet will not be made on your side. Uh, the signal for where you aimed perfectly ex uh, exactly will be sent to the server rather. And from there on, the, a random bullet will be sent out, and then that bullet will be sent back to your client side. In which is why the client and the server side of where bullets hit will be two different places. Which again, means that you can be able to hit shots that doesn't hit. Which is why, randomly sometimes, you will shoot a guy three times and you can see blood on the wall and two of the shots or only one of the shots hit. Which is really frustrating, I do know that. But in other case scenarios, guys, and girls, if there are any out there, there are a myth on the internet I've heard. In opposite case scenarios, bullets that should not hit that you shoot will on the server side actually connect, so there is no excuse about that feature of the game anymore. And by the way, this is a good feature, it's a really good feature, because that means that rage hackers cannot hack their client side of the game anymore and force every bullet to be perfectly shot somewhere. It means that if they want to do that with a negative and jump around like faggots and try and do that stuff, it won't it won't work, because now they are not controlling exactly where the bullets appear anymore, and now they're shooting and the, the bullets is only appearing maybe at the close proximity and nothing else, which is very nice. It makes the game a lot more hackerless, and from there on out, we are only gonna get rewarded as players, right? So, um, yeah, that's actually, actually a good feature, and with the 128 tick, this also happens a lot smoother and faster so you know take that for what you will still it's a decent feature so you know what I think we're just about done here I gotta just recap here so I talked about 64 tick versus 128 it's twice the amount of um, transfer rate it chokes the connection twice as much if you got a bad connection um, there's implemented a system uh, with uh, the recoil that you can detect a little bit more based on uh, you know pushing hackers back and shit like that 
Um, also, we got the audio feedback and the visual feedback of 128 versus uh, 64 tick. Um, yeah, did I mention that there is an inter interpretation system that it only like it make an estimate of where frames should be in between the frames that you get and send, which allow you to play the game at a higher frame rate than just 64 or 128. It's a fucking genius invention, by the way, and it works approximately as I said, even though, again, I might have butchered technical what it does. So, you know what? We are done here. I think we've gone through most things. If you have any questions, we can patch that up in the comment section, so feel free to ask. Uh, I'm just about to answer to anything. So, anyways, if you want to support the YouTube channel, we got Patreon and Skin Donation. So, if you want to support anybody else who uh, enjoy this channel, there's your chance. So, anyways, nickname is Yellow. Thanks for watching. Have a nice day, and don't get beastified when you play.